This is a message to all my supporters of this podcast. I'm introducing a new supporters program. You can contribute a small amount as a one-off payment to show your love for this podcast. Thank you in advance for all your contributions. This is the Absolute Mindset Podcast. My name is Mark Hayward. I am a corporate employee with an entrepreneurial mindset. This podcast will help and support you with new ideas about business. These are my thoughts, ideas and comments. Today, we're talking about no regrets and what you want to be remembered for. Two thoughts on your mindset should carry you forward. Thank you. Hi, everyone. This is the Absolute Business Mindset Podcast. Um, I am talking to you about two different things today. Um, The first thing is something that someone said to me fairly recently, uh, which was, what do you want to be remembered for? Um, So I'm going to break that down and sort of break down the, the idea behind it, I think, and equally what that means for me. And then the second one is no regrets. So um, someone else said this to me fairly recently about that you need to make sure you have no regrets in your life. So um, again, I'll break it down a little bit and uh, and also what it means to me as well. So um, so first thing we're going to talk about today is what do you want to be remembered for? So so when you're thinking about that, that sort of concept for yourself, um, what do you want to be remembered for? Who do you want to remember you um, and, 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 and for an idea of what they are going to say about you? Because I think the most important people that you should be thinking about to be remembered by is your family. That should be your starting point. Now, that's not everyone's starting point. Uh, it could be colleagues. It could be friends. They could be both, uh, depending on your work habits and work uh, lifestyle. So, so, so when you think about who, so they're, they're, they're the key people, anyone else outside of that, if that's a, um, a, a, a random person you meet in the pub or in the coffee shop, that they, they get discounted very, very quickly. Your family, your, your friends and your work colleagues are the people that you want to be thought about most. So you want to make, whether it's your mother and father or brother or sister, uh, you, that sort of immediate family, if you're in that age bracket, um, then you sort of have a mindset of the, I, I don't know, when I was in my mid twenties, um, I wasn't really thinking about what I want to be remembered for. I didn't really have a prioritization in the way that I have now in my career. So I suppose at that time I wanted to be remembered as a great friend, uh, a good bloke to, to, to go out with and, and, and socialize with and, and just be interesting. I think I went in my former years, my twenties, I wanted to be interesting rather than successful. So, um, it, it's not just one thing for all of your life. You change and you adapt and, and moments in your life happen. You get a long-standing girlfriend, you get married, you have kids, whatever those those markers in your life are. So um, and then and then my life took a turn, which meant that um, I started prioritizing my work a lot more and my career. I ended up moving from a job to a career, which is great. So. Um, so I, I, I think you need to think about uh who and then what they're going to say about you what you'd like them to say about you now um, you have to be realistic that what you would like them to say about you isn't always what they are going to say about you sadly that's not the case that you're able to control uh, that so much Um, so it might actually be helpful those key people in your life um, whether that's a mother or father whether that's a wife or a husband um ask them what what do you think I'm good at what do you think I'm because I I think we talk a lot about or I've talked a lot about mindset and about goals and what you want to achieve Um, but interestingly sometimes you need feedback Um, in your career if you're in a corporate career as I am you get feedback and you get uh, assessment Um, in in Outside of that, you don't always get that sort of assessment. And in some jobs, you don't have that sort of uh, sort of structure. Um, so it's good to get feedback from friends and family and colleagues uh, to see how you go in, see how your 
other people's perceptions. Some people are more self-aware than others. Um, some people aren't. Um, and, and I think self-awareness, um, a lot of people talk about how important it is. And I, I, I agree. I think you need to know yourself before you start knowing anybody else and start dictating what anyone else is thinking or what anyone else is doing. So it's incredibly important to get that feedback um, on a semi-regular basis. You don't want to I know everyone is a bore that just wants to talk about themselves. Uh, but equally, those key people should listen and understand that you want that sort of feedback and it would be helpful to get that. But obviously, friends and family, you've got to be slightly careful because some people are more personal development savvy than others. Um, and I think you just need to be a little bit careful um, if you are one of those types of people like myself that, is into self-development and personal development um if your if your friend is not uh, you might have to just manage that conversation a bit more um carefully than someone that's sort of into it as well so um so yeah i think that's 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 a a, a fair assessment of who and what so just on a more personal uh, viewpoint. So I wanted, to, I want to feel like I've had an interesting career as I, I'm, I'm working in a, a corporate environment. And as I've said in the last couple of, last uh, couple of podcasts, I'm going to move career, but same, same business, just different, different company. I want to be thought of as, as a, having an interesting career and make the right moves at the right time. Now, hindsight is a wonderful thing. And I don't know if moving to this other company is going to be good or not. I My gut feel is that it is going to be good. Um, but you, that's what you want to be remembered for. Um, do you want your whole career being in one company? Um, my grandfather's um, age group, he, he just recently passed away, uh, who was 89, um, his, he had his whole career in one company and got the watch and, and had the party 40 years or whatever it was. Um, and that was a reputable, suitable, reasonable way to live your life um, and, and, and in your job and your career. I think that's less usual these days. Um, there's a lot of movement. Um, people move, um, relatively quickly if they don't like the natural order. Um, I think that's equally, um, okay. Uh, at my company that I'm still working for, um, there are quite a lot of lifers. Um, it's a very big company. Um, and there are a lot of people that find that sort of atmosphere and, either don't want to move and we'll talk about a little bit more about opportunities and taking opportunities in the no regrets bit which is part two of this um but it's what it's what you want to be remembered you want to be remembered by your ex-colleagues ex-friends that you were a, a a company man through and through or were you trying to make a difference and 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 and, and, and make those, take those opportunities when they arise, when the right ones arise. But obviously you never really know until you actually make that step forward. So, um, so a couple of personal things which might go a little bit wishy washy for you. It depends if you, you, you sort of resonate with my, my ideas. Um, I want to make a difference. The whole point of doing this podcast, the whole point of being an, a, uh, a corporate employee with an entrepreneurial mindset is doing things differently. And that's what I want to do in my career. So let's just focus on career just for now. And I want to make a difference. I want to be considered someone different, someone exceptional, someone uh, brave, intelligent, strong, robust, um, can deliver. So those sorts of things. So so making a difference is is, is something important to me. And um, you can kind of spot them in, in in my company now. The guys that have a little bit about them, a little bit about themselves, and a little bit of being, of being able to think outside of the the box that uh, your company has designed and created over sometimes hundreds of years worth of business. And I'm not saying that that is not warranted and and a good basis to how you t take things forward. In some cases, equally, I would say. Um, 
some of the people that actually have read a management book, have specialised in something, have have um, have wanted to be a better person and, and how they do that and making a difference is a good starting point in my idea, in my mind. Uh, the other thing which is probably down on, on a lot, on some people's list, is just being a good person. I want to treat people reasonably. I want to treat people well. Um, there's a difference between treating people well and being naive. Um, I think um, in my younger years, I was probably very naive. Um, and what the older I've got, the more people I've met, the the more experiences that I've had has made me a more cynical person. But it's not as cynical with negativity. That's probably it probably doesn't make sense but i i think there's a to be savvy um and and to be uh pragmatic um and and but but treat people well but but if someone treats you badly then that's different you 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 respond in the way that you think is right and that is can be strongly can be firmly can be assertively um but your starting point i think everyone should start with i'm a good person i hope people to be a good person to me the ones that aren't just ignore them i was gonna swear but i've got a most of my 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 comments on this is that i'm a clean uh podcast rather than um swearing so so i think everyone should try and starting point should be a good person um another thing which is a little bit self-help but i want to lead people I want to manage people and I want to support people. So let's take it from the flip side. So supporting people. So again, it's just being a nice guy. It's like if someone something bad happened to someone, being available and being helpful. If something um, is concerning someone and they can trust you and, and trust is a big thing in work and you need to try and be trustworthy, um, you need to be able to help other people because at some stage in your life slash career, you will need someone to support you. Now, I would say I am a strong, robust, pragmatic person. But I have no doubt that sometime in the future, I will need someone to be there for me. And therefore, I hope that I am there for people now. That if they're ever, well, like, let's, let's not bush, beat around the bush. The end of my, uh, my 2018 with the, the, the bereavement that I, I, I faced, um, I did need support. I did need a, 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 an arm around the shoulder, a sort of friendly comment. Um, didn't really go into massive detail with them. That wasn't where I wanted to be and what I wanted to do, but, um, they were there for me if I needed them. And that was because I'd supported other people in other situations. So supporting people is important and, and, and a good thing. So managing and leading. So, so both these things are about, um, it's about mindset and, I think leadership is something that happens all the way through the business. And it's not just the top level, the CEOs, the partners or whatever, that, that, that are the people that lead and manage. You, you should be a leader in whatever grade you are because you, you, you get practice on being a leader. You get practice on, 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 on managing people and, and bringing people on and, 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 and delivering in a group, in a team. These are all things that you need leadership and management skills and, 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 and qualities. So I would say that even when I was at the lowest level as an associate, I didn't realize it at the time. But I think even then, I, I like taking on responsibilities. I like taking ownership of things. I like to deliver. I like to make a difference. I heard that before. Um, and so I think even when I was an associate, I, I kind of, I wouldn't have described myself as a leader because I was a lot more uncertain about my my path at that stage um as an associate but the 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 more responsibilities i've got the 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 more i've delivered to people and delivered quality to people i've sort of felt myself more as a leader even though i'm not a, a massively senior person so um so that's another other other points i wanted to be remembered for um and the last point on this is i want I want people to think that I made the most of my opportunities, which is going to lead me into no regrets really nicely. But just to finish on this point, 
opportunities come up in your life. Um, changing from an administrator to a consultant was a big thing in my life. And I took that opportunity and I've delivered. In a personal life, when you have your first child, it's daunting and you're like, well, I've got to make the most of this opportunity. And every relationship has ups and downs, uh, but you make the most of the opportunities of being together. So I would say that making the most of opportunities is incredibly important. You have to make the decision whether you want it or not. And that's a whole different podcast, making the right decision and, and doing the right thing. But you've got to make the most when these opportunities arrive. Um, so, yeah, I, 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 that's going to lead me into my second point, which is uh, something someone said to me about you, you don't want to have any regrets. Um, and this really resonated with me. Um, because I kind of thought to myself, this is one thing that on my deathbed and, and I'm, I'm, I'm praying to God and I'm talking to loved ones and I would like to think that I don't have any regrets about the decisions I made through my life. Um, cause I think that's. That's a, that would be a good trigger point. It's, it's, it's kind of too late then, but but if you can if you can feel that at the end of your life you you've got no regrets, and I, I think it's virtually impossible to say you have no regrets, but not many regrets would be great. Um, I wish I'd done that. I wish I hadn't have done that. I wish I could change that. Um, all those things come into regret, and. I think you can live your life scared or you can live your life confident and want to deliver. And, and, and you've got to take these opportunities when they arise. Spotting the opportunities is, is, is quite difficult. Um, sometimes they're not. Sometimes they're very easy. Some, sometimes they're a little bit more subtle. Um, but opportunities occur all the way through your life. Um, and you can either do two things. You can look them straight in the eye and make an assessment whether that's the right thing for you or not. Equally, you can ignore them or not see them. If you don't see them, you kind of, there's kind of an excuse. There's not because you should be looking for them, but you you can ignore them. And I, I personally think that my career, if I just stayed at the same company for the next 30 years, um, 25, 30 years of my career. Um, I think I would have had a regret about that. But equally, it's taken me um, five years in the consultancy business to get to the point where when an opportunity comes around, I want to grab it. Five years ago, I wouldn't have been ready. I wouldn't have been available. I wouldn't have been in the mindset to take on something new. New is good too much new you kind of get into that sort of um i've heard quite a lot of people say to me that i was just a a a, a constant changer of jobs i needed it's kind of like your, your linkedin or your or your instagram or twitter feed it's sort of that dopamine that you get that hit of something new someone likes me someone likes a post i've made and um and i would say that it depends where that opportunity came from. So if it's someone that's liked your work and has given you an opportunity, um, then that's great. That's a really strong argument. You go looking for an opportunity equally. You've, you've made part of the decision yourself because you've thought to yourself that you, you want to see an opportunity. You want an opportunity. Creating opportunities is really good. That's a really strong place to be. Um, creating and, and opportunities occurring for you, um, two really, really strong places. And if you get an opportunity, you need to assess it. Now, now I went into this last, not the last podcast before about how I broke it down and, and it very basically pros and cons. It kind of was, it kind of wasn't. Um, but equally, where did I want my life to be? So the, the last point, and, and, and if I hadn't moved now, would I have regretted it in the future if nothing had changed medium term? 
So, um... We'll be back after a quick break. Hi, I'm Alex, the host of X Health Show. Meet the future of healthcare. Think X Men, that's X Health. Actual superheroes behind programming living cells to cure cancer once and for all. Tech that detects preterm delivery in seconds, brain computer interface, or apps that employ AI to match you, your disease, with the best treatment. X Health Show brings to you visionaries who push the boundaries of healthcare from Switzerland, the heart of Europe, and the most innovative country in the world. Let me introduce you to their startups. Head to X Health Show, meet the future of healthcare. Happy to greet you there. You always have to look for opportunities. They will always happen to some some degree. Um, they can be very subtle and very minor. Um, for example, taking on a slightly different role in your job, in your career. Um, equally, it can be bigger. It can be a uh, change in job, as we've talked about. It can be a change in lifestyle, a change in how you want to conduct your life. Um, but opportunities occur all the time. Look for them. If you get nothing else from this podcast, look for opportunities. Create them if they if you can, and if you can't create them. Do your best and opportunities will occur. You just have to see them. So look out for them, okay? Open your eyes and listen. So many people don't listen in those situations for these opportunities. So listen. Be quiet. Quieten that voice in your head. Quieten your mouth and stop talking and listen. Okay? All right. Another reason why you, don't, you you have regrets and why you're not making these opportunities uh, bite is a quote of, well, not all my ducks were in a row. The stars weren't aligned. Well, that is the worst, worst, worst decision you've made. Because it's never, it's never like that. I, I can't even think of a time when everything was perfect and I could then make a decision or take an opportunity. There is always something pulling you back. There's always something pushing you in a different direction. Whether it's family or friends or colleagues, whether it's money, whether it's too many moves in your career, whether it's whatever it is, your mum telling you um, you're not good enough. She might not ever change her view. So if you're listening to this and your mum tells you, you're no good or you can't achieve anything more than what you've got now and an opportunity comes, take that voice, take that person out of the scenario. That person is a negative, negative support network. And this is one of my next points. Having a negative support network and your own negativity. So having your own negative support network is so crippling and there is so many opportunities that you miss because you just aren't looking for them. You just can't hear them. You just can't face them in some situations. Some people are just literally crippled by fear, which is created from negative impact of other people. Often, often in these situations, it's your mum or your dad. Could be your wife, could be your husband, but often it's your mum and dad. Now, your mum and dad are going to mess you up, whatever happens. Even the best mum and dad in the world mess you up in some way. Because you're not going to get a perfect creature that you, that you produce. And one of the things I've realised in, 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 in bringing up children is actually being a little bit messed up in a small way actually gives you strength and it gives you robustness and gives you strength. So... But getting that network and, and whether you listen to them, it's not listening to that support network. I know people said it could be your best mate or your best mates that you grew up with. True. But then just, even if you don't want to cut them out, reduce the level of impact they have on you. Don't talk to them about your career. Talk about someone. Talk to someone else about your career. A mentor, a a, a boss, a, a, someone else, a, fa a family member, or friends of the family that has a successful career. Speak to them about your career. Don't speak to your mates 
who have no interest, who, who are not interested in you. They're interested in their status as a as as a person in a, a support network. You need to get a strong support network, uh, whether it's paid people, whether it's family, whether it's friends. The, uh, you've got to get people who are trusted that have experience and knowledge and can help you go forward. That's, I think, the key thing in all of this is getting someone that's experienced and knowledgeable to help you. And that, I think, comes in a mentor that doesn't come in your mate. Your mate can have good ideas, but you probably need someone outside of that. And that could be a mum or a dad, but equally, as I've just described there, they could be part of your negative support network. And then the next point was your own negativity. So that voice in your head that tells you you shouldn't do that, don't do that, I don't, you're not good enough. Now, that is driven usually by a person in your support network. Could be someone who's passed away, doesn't necessarily have to be someone in your active network, but your own negativity, you have to put to the side and you can achieve things. If You can be better. You can take opportunities. You can get to the point where you're making no regrets. You are turning it up. You're doing a podcast a week. You're doing a speaking event. You're doing your own course online or in person. That's just that's just the, the, the natural thing when people do things like this, like podcasts. That's your next step. That it might be, it might not be, but getting that own negativity out of your head. So when you get those situations where someone says, "Do you know what? I'd like you to do an event, to speak at an event." If you've got a negative thought in your mindset, you will then go, "No, I can't do it because of kids, family, other commitments, job, career." Just how it just will happen. So you need to you need to get that negativity out of the scenario, out of the situation. And I suppose one of the things that is a good, 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 good thing to do when you're thinking about your goal setting in January and August is are you happy? Just plain and simple. Sometimes the simplest things are the best. Are you happy? And if you can think about that and think of opportunities, would you be happier if you'd have made a different decision? That's very hard to do that. But if you're happy, you can continue on your course of action, your path. If you're not, then you need to do something about creating opportunities or listening to opportunities that come. Now, the big thing about change is it's scary. You don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen on my first day. I've got an idea. I remember what it was like when I joined the other com- this other company. But it, it, it is scary. And if you've got a negative out for a, a frame of mind, mindset, you'll see it as big, scary, and you don't want to do it. But as I've said, I've repeated this lots in this podcast. You've got to take these opportunities when they come up. Now, one of the things that one of the reasons why I actually moved was because I think I got too comfortable. I liked my job. I'm not saying I dislike my job, but uh, I liked my job that I was being put outside my comfort zone on a regular basis. I liked it. My 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 self development books and listening to Audible and whatever. I, I liked being put out of my comfort zone. It gave me a bit of a thrill. You've got to be careful with this. Again, it's the dopamine. It's the it's the thrill. It's the high. But small situations, um, doing a demo, doing a presentation, um, leading a project, um, 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 taking a call, whatever it is, if you just put yourself outside your comfort zone, you will be a better person. You will be a better person. There is no doubt in my mind. So you need to do that. You need to be able to get yourself outside your comfort zone to be growing. If you want to grow as a person, you need to get there, build it wider, bigger. Because you've just tipped outside your comfort zone. It was a struggle, but I did it and I liked it and I'll do it again. And you just push yourself a little bit further, a little bit further, a little bit further. Right. Um, and, and the whole thing about regret, 
I think regret is fueled by negativity. So we've talked a lot about this podcast, the second part of this podcast about your own negativity and others impacting you in your support network about negativity. So I think you need to think about that. If, if you're worried about decisions, find someone you trust to share that load with. It might be a partner. It could be a partner. You might trust them. It might be a mentor. Might be an ex boss, might be a family member, might be a family friend of a family member. Think about it, find it, and use that to take your opportunities. Okay, this is the end of the podcast. Um, if just a couple of ways to be able to find me, YouTube, you can find me on YouTube. Um, I'm recording all of these on um, on YouTube as well. Um, you can find me on. Um, any of the normal podcast places, iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, etc., etc. Um, you can also find me on um, Twitter, Mark Hayward169, and uh, Mark J. Hayward on Instagram. Um, and there is actually a Facebook group uh, called Absolute Business Mindset. Not really pushed that at the moment, just got that ready when, if and when we need it. And also do check out the website, which is absolutebusinessmindset.com. Uh, there's some extra things on there, which is exciting and nice to see. Right. Thanks a lot, guys. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye.